celestial navigation, which specifically works with trigonomic function Sakatoa. When we take a angular measurement to a star, let's say in the sky here, and we're going to take an angular reading to the star. Okay, now we've got two straight lines. We have a 90 degree. Great, and the star has a 90 as well. This is how the trigonometry works, mate. Let's say I measured a angle to the star at 50 degrees. That would give us 40, correct? Okay, so if we use the math, 90 minus the measured angle gives us the altitude, the elevation angle, which is 40 times 60 nautical miles, which gives us our distance. So because I did this, I was able to get the distance from my GP to the star's GP. Flatoid loves to say soccer toa at every opportunity, but does he understand what it means? Some old horses can always hear their owner's approach is how it was taught to me. And I understood it to be an aid helping me to remember which trig function to use when trying to determine the unknown angles or side lengths of a right angle triangle. The three functions are sine, cosine and tangent. The other letters stand for opposite, hypotenuse and adjacent. With the focus on this 50 degree angle, this will be the opposite side, and this will be the adjacent. From Sakatoa, I know that the tangent of 50 degrees will equal the ratio of this side over this side. And all I have to do now is rearrange and solve for the height. Celestial navigation, which specifically works with trigonomic function Sakatoa. And this trigonometric ratio for the sides holds true in every case, no matter the triangle's height and no matter the length of its base. So when someone tells you that the height of a star above a flat earth doesn't matter or is unknowable, ask them, at what height did the trigonometry stop working? Now, because Flatsoid knows how to get this distance, that's 60 nautical miles for every degree of this angle, he now has enough information to calculate the height of this star above his flat earth. As you can see, according to the trigonometry that Flatsoid swears by, its height has to physically change when the observer moves. There's just no getting away from that fact. If we lock the current height of the star in and let the observer travel, the star will still appear higher in the sky when they're closer and lower when they're further away. But notice there's no longer 60 nautical miles per degree. Obviously, the star's height doesn't change and 60 nautical miles per degree is observed in reality. So Flatsoid has to explain why his model fails without any deception. And yes, I'm referring to when he compresses the x-axis using distances stolen from the globe model. Where did you get that 60 from? Nautical miles from the angular reading. I'm going to show you. So the sextant, aka the section of a circle, that section is taking a measurement of, of that arc on the bottom, you see, of the sextant itself. That's your degree measurement. That's how you get your nautical miles. Because it's a 60 degree angle you are using. You see, the sextant is a 60 degree. Unsurprisingly, Flatsoy could only spew word salad after being asked repeatedly where the 60 nautical mile multiplier number came from. And apparently, according to him anyway, it's built into the sextant. So let me ask you this. If it's built into the sextant and I'm in a dinghy 300 yards from a lighthouse, when I measure the angle to its light to be 20 degrees, does it also mean I'm 4200 nautical miles from it at the same time? How does the sextant know the difference? So everyone is pretty much still none the wiser. Other than say the word Sokotoa, Flatsoy didn't do any trigonometry and he didn't explain why an angle is multiplied by 60 to get a distance. Shall we take a look how easy it is for the globe model? Here we have a GP of a star where the star is directly overhead and very far away. 
this observer is looking at that star. These are the observer's angles. Multiplying this green zenith distance angle by 60 constantly gives us the length of this arc, which is the shortest straight line surface path between the observer and the GP of the star. And this works for a constantly moving GP. For anyone, anywhere, the star can be seen. So why multiply each degree by 60 nautical miles? Well, to use a flat side catchphrase, it's very simple. Given the Earth has a circumference of 21,600 nautical miles, one degree will equal 1 360th of that, i.e. 60. So if our zenith distance is 50 degrees, then we just multiply it by 60 to get the length of arc AB. And this is how it looks in the 3D calculator. We know this arc length because geometry says this angle is the same as this one. And we know that for each degree there is 60 nautical miles. Where did you get that 60 from? Nautical miles from the angular reading. I'm going to show you. So the sextant, a.k.a. the section of a circle, that section is taking a measurement of, of that arc on the bottom, you see, of the sextant itself. That's your degree measurement. That's how you get your nautical miles. Because it's a 60 degree angle you are using. You see, the sextant is a 60 degree. This is how the trigonometry works, mate. Thank you.